uh, our vice chairman, <coughs> Dr. Nareen Shetty, on his talk on planning premium IOL for a post LASIK patient. Uh, good morning, everyone. So this is more of actually a discussion. And that is because my topic is something in the gray area, actually more in the black area. Uh, because this is something not too many people and too many people have got into uh, doing uh, in their practice. So my talk will be just to create a momentum to initiate the flow of thoughts. So what do we do when these post-refractive patients come and demand for these trifocal IOLs? Can I have a raise of hands of how many people would actually implant a trifocal IOLs in a post-refractive eyes? All right, not too many. <laughs> so good. So obviously one option is where you don't put a trifocal or any multifocal IOLs. So then let's look at the various options what we can plan for. So one is choosing the right patient is very, very, very important because they have to be highly motivated and they have to have a more realistic expectations post-surgery. So uh, the next thing is, I think a lot of uh, talks have already been told about selecting the right patient, so I wouldn't go too much into the details about it. So looking at the different option, one is, let's say the most ideal corneas, everything is perfect, uh, everything, you know, it ticks all the box and then you can, you know, implant a trifocal IOL and it should be good. Now, when we look at the second option, which is the problematic option where the cornea is not ideal, we have a lot of irregularities, and then we have two options. The first option is where you do a topoguided treatment, regularize it, and then do a trifocal IOL. The second option is where, um, not the most ideal, but you do the trifocal IOL, and then plan either a topoidide or a wavefront guided. So let's, with open mind, look at the different options and look at the different pros and cons. So when we look at the first option where we do the treatment and then the IOL surgery, uh, definitely we'll have much more accurate IOL calculations because, and we also did a study where we found almost 1.3 diopters pre and post surgery in terms of IOL planning. Now the other benefits of it is because we have the advantage of doing a cataract surgery following the regularization. So we have an opportunity to treat all the higher order abrasions and we're not too worried about the refractive change post-treatment. And the other benefit is you can always reassess uh, whether he's a suitable candidate again for a trifocal IOL. Now the different cons is, uh, if at all you do get a post-refractive uh, surprise and you don't have uh, not much of residual to do a one more treatment, so then you're in trouble, and definitely it needs a large more data. Now, looking at the second option, where we implant the lens and then plan for a uh, corneal procedure, what are the different options? Now, first is, what in, it, in terms of IOL predictability, I mean, you know, we have, it's already been documented that about 92% of the times that is less than one di uh, diopter of uh, error. So that's one advantage, but definitely because it's a trifocal or a multifocal IOL, yeah, anything more than 0.75 is not a good idea. But uh, any post-refractive surprises, you have an opportunity to treat it. So that is one advantage. But when we look at the cons, definitely very less accurate uh, IOL calculation and post-treatment, uh, when we post uh, when we do this uh, corneal procedure, we have to handle all the higher order abrasions and uh, the refractive surprise, if at all it's there. Now, when you're treating higher order abrasions, as we know, uh, you know, it's kind of a, you need to be very selective and sometimes it can be a little unpredictable in terms of refractive change post-surgery. So, having said this, uh, I would like uh, to put the question to the expert uh, uh, panelists and uh, uh, delegates and the faculty who's here is first I would want whether they would actually do it or not. Uh, the second is which option would they choose? Dr. Theo Salis, do you want to take it first? This afternoon I think I'm giving a paper on the second choice which we follow since many years now. Um, because we do have a nice wavefront guided approach because the Pyramis has a much better resolution compared to all other wavefront 
um, sensors, and therefore I choose the second uh, way, which, by the way, is uh, we, we never have real big, big surprises regarding uh, refraction. And also we are correcting, uh, at, at up to one month after search, we are correcting wavefront guided driven, including the astigmatism, which tells us that we don't need um, toric uh, trifocal IOLs anymore. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sri Ganesh, uh, I think he's on there. Anyone else wants to, Dr. Imamshu, do you want to give a comment on this? Is? What would be your ideal option? So, uh, I would actually choose, depending upon, I, I would certainly like to choose the first one where I would uh, have much more reliability in my IOL uh, calculation. But uh, like uh, Professor Theo Saylor said, uh, it also depends on what tool I have in my hand. If I have something which gives me a very good reproducible, reliable, repeatable wavefront uh, readings which are coming post uh, multifocal uh, IOL, I don't mind going for the second option also. But not always everybody would have those kind of uh, things available in their hand. So if I have to generalize and tell everybody, well, I would say that I would rather have a regular cornea and then treat it rather than having an irregular cornea and go for a, um, a multifocal lens and uh, then. Yeah, good point. Dr. Ramuthi, do you want to? I sort of agree with Himanshu because TK, though it largely works, with the results are always a little unpredictable. Some patients you get extremely good results while in some others it's less than optimal. So I'd like to ensure that the cornea is reasonably in good shape before I implant a multifocal intraocular lens. So maybe do a TCAT and try to uh, regularize the cornea, then subsequently decide on whether I'm going in for a multifocal IOL at all. Now I use trifocal IOLs quite a lot, but then in these situations, maybe the EDOF lenses have a little advantage in the sense that uh, uh, because of the spread of focus that they have, they're a little more tolerant to uh, uh, a suboptimal cornea. Though in a grossly irregular cornea, I would strictly stay away from multifocal intraocular lenses. So the next question is, if let's say it is a post-LASIK patient, would you actually lift the flap and do the treatment or do more of a trans-PRK uh, trans approach? Um, first of all, we exclude um, refractive surgery patients from getting multifocal lenses at all. So if somebody had a laser treatment and has an irregular cornea, we don't do trifocals at all because the, the, the degree of dissatisfaction is unacceptably high. I, I also believe that uh, the, the, there is a way forward now that we have the best of formulas which are available. And using Barrett True Case, we are a lot more con complacent about suggesting a multifocal in a post classic cornea because we are getting target emotropic results uh, with greater confidence. And of course, as Dr. Ramurthy and uh, Himanshu had said, that if I were facing a little irregular surface, I would definitely prefer to do a TCAT because it will take care of some of the refractive correction also, and then assess the cornea, and then go ahead and do a trifocal. Perfect. Does anyone else wants to give a comment or questions? Don't steal our microphone. <laughs> I think uh, definitely there is, as you can see, there is no one single rule. So we have an option where if you're very comfortable treating regular corneas because you're very scared about, you know, your, in terms of your IL predictability post-surgery, uh, definitely you can always regularize and then go forward. The second option also is like how Dr. Thea Zellin was saying, is where you do the trifocal IOL and then you do a wavefront guided treatment. Uh, so I, I think in terms of different... Uh, can, I, can I just have one point here? So I don't think we should convey to everybody that we would love to put everybody in uh, trifocal lenses uh, post-refractive surgery. Certainly not. And it's extremely important to counsel these patients about uh, the issues uh, there. But sometimes we also have to think that having a dogmatic rule that I will never ever do something also may be a hardline approach. Because same time, when we have multifocal lens, and if we have surprise, 
most of us don't shy away by doing a refractive surgery. So if you actually look at later on, the optical system is that you have multifocal and you have a refractive surgery altered cornea. So here, after the refractive surgery, when we do multifocal, it's similar, but maybe the, the aberrations from the cornea would be higher depending upon the, uh, how uh, the previous refractive surgery was done. So it's very important to evaluate the patient in the first go that are you satisfied yourself that you would be able to nail the refractive error here and the optical system would be good enough. If you are satisfied and if patient is uh, agreeable to uh, the, the side effects, then yes, please. And more importantly, it is this group of patients who are ready to experiment. The primarily, the fact they've done refractive surgery, they are a different group. And these are the groups who are very much interested in multifocal. So probably we should keep our minds open to seeing how best we can do multifocal to these patients. And they do understand when we counsel them. Yeah. So like I early mentioned, counseling, counseling, counseling is the most important thing. More realistic expectation is the most crucial part. And uh, just to summarize the whole thing, counseling, choosing the right patient. And uh, definitely it depends on your personal preference whether you want to regularize the cornea first and then go for the IOL or you'd go for the IOL and then always do the treatment. In terms of treating, uh, lifting the flap and treating or doing a trans PRK approach, uh, one advantage of the trans uh, PRK approach, you get an extra six, uh, 60 to 70 microns more uh, to treat. So that is one advantage, but always you have to be aware of the chances of haze formation post-operative. So having said this, can we have a raise of hands again for option one where you do the treatment and then transplant the IOL? Can we have a raise of hands? Fantastic. And the option two, where we put the lens and then do a waveframe. Okay. Uh, yeah. Don't do anything. Who would who would prefer that you don't do a trifocal? I think don't do wins <laughs> at the moment. So I think uh, the take-home message. I think definitely everyone has <laughs> packed into their bag. There is nothing uh, uh, very solid evidence uh, for this, but definitely it is not an option which you shouldn't consider. I think with the right patient, you should do and have good results. Thank you for your time. One question. Excuse me. How long, hello? Yeah, how long you wait after uh, doing TCAT to plan for the trifocal IEL? Yeah, see, I think uh, six months would be the best actually, so that you're, you can properly reassess everything any kind of a post-treatment complication or something is there, you can always reassess and then the route. Six months would be the best. Second option? Second option, I think you don't have, uh, once the surgery is done, uh, you don't have to worry too much about any surface changes. Uh, so lesser also is fine, even three months, four months is fine. But nonetheless, six months can always keep a standard Thank you.